Hi everyone, welcome to part two of the dual telescope setup. Now um, I thought I would uh, do an unboxing of the new part that I have just received that's going to be needed for um, being able to use my two telescopes together. So you know, get a good uh, comfy chair, cup of tea, a book, maybe a, a Netflix video and um, sit down for a nice long unboxing video. So let's get started. And that's it. We're done with the unboxing video. There it is, that's what I've just got. This new handy dandy fancy sort of Losmandy plates with alt as adjustments. Anyway, as always, thank you for tuning into the video. No, I'm just kidding, of course that's not the end of the unboxing. There's two more parts. Uh, a Allen key and a couple of sort of bolt-on bits, which I'm not exactly sure what these do at this stage, but anyway. Anyway, all kidding aside, um, this is what I've just received. This has come from Optech in the United States. And uh, basically what it, this does is I put this into the saddle that the um, Skywatcher Esprit is currently setting, sitting in. And then I put the Esprit into this saddle here. And it's got you know the clamps here to clamp it all nice and tight. And then over here we've got old ads adjustments, which means that I can actually just sort of angle the telescope around a bit so that it, it lines up with the other telescope and that way they will both be polar aligned at the same time and therefore they should be able to you know have nice guiding on both telescopes etc. Now um, this one from Optech originally when you see it advertised on their site has a maximum weight capacity of 11 kilos and there's another one by JTD uh, what's it called let me just have a quick look it's a JTD dual rig telescope adjustment saddle and that also only has an 11 kilo um, capacity. So when I was looking around for what I could get I was like mm, mine's about 14.2 kilos it's going to be too heavy but then uh, one of my subscribers on the video I did on part one uh, whose name is I think it's Rafa or Rafa I'm sorry if I've mispronounced that but he sent me a message and said, how are you aligning these telescopes? And I said, well, at this stage, I'm not. And he mentioned that he had this particular saddle, but he had it sort of uh, adapted by Optech to make it uh, deal with a, a higher weight capacity. So what Optech have done is they've added these two, uh, the, this, these two over here on the side, and that's what the Allen key is for. And basically, once you adjust it into position, um, you then tighten these two extra supports, which will hold it in place and therefore be able to take in excess of the 11 kilos. So, um, yeah, I got in contact with Optech and they sent it out and it's, it's arrived. So the next thing to do is to get this onto the telescope and, um, hmm, weather's not looking good for the next 10 days, but uh, eventually, hopefully, I'll be able to get a, a night to try and align the two telescopes. So um, we'll head out to the observatory and uh, get this installed. One eternity later. Okay, so we're out here in the observatory and you can see I've got the two telescopes as in the previous video, all um, sort of pointing at the South Celestial Pole. But uh, I'm guessing just being this far apart, by the time we get out to the uh, the pole, we are out by quite a few light years. So um, I've noticed that when one is polar aligned in Shark Cat and I check it with the other one, the other one is only um, considered to be fair, it's not even good and I have to move it quite a bit to um, get good polar alignment but of course that's the whole mount in which case the next telescope is, is out of polar alignment. And I think that's why when I was doing my initial tests um, if one of them was guiding, I was getting nice stars, but then the other one had elongated stars. If it was the other way around, same sort of thing. So that's where this is going to come in useful. So I will take the Sky Watcher off and uh, I put this into the saddle here. I'm not sure, probably maybe this way around. And then I'll slot this into here and then I can do my alt has adjustments in order to get this to just, just move enough to be in line perfectly with the mead. Okay, so it's on and um, it took a long time to get it balanced, I have to say. It was not only having to move it left and right, but uh, both of these had to be moved backwards and forwards. Um, this extra 2.6 kilos, which is what this um, bit weighs, just threw the whole thing out of balance. And um, 
then also had to try and uh, compensate for the juice shield which has a bit of weight in it as well. So I needed the family involved to help so the whole thing didn't just go crashing off behind me. It's, a, it's quite a lot of weight to hold. Um, but the balance is not too bad. Um, if we move it round to here, you can see that that's got good balance. The other way it does wander the other way a tiny bit, but I'm hoping that um, that won't be an issue. So, um, yeah, I'll just show you a little bit closer up what this looks like. So this is what it looks like close up. Um, this was the, uh, this is the Prima Luce Lab um, saddle. Uh, the twin saddle here that this was originally sitting in and now I've got this sitting in between. Um, these knobs could be a little bit bigger for tightening, um, they are quite small, quite hard to get a decent grip. Uh, it would have been nice if they were made a little bit bigger but you know, that's not too bad. Maybe something more akin to the size of the ones that are on this side for uh, adjusting the alt as. Um, and then, as I said, I've got these two extra brackets here, which I'll have to loosen off and then um, tighten once I have the telescopes aligned. Now, um, because of that extra weight that went in, um, I did have to get another weight for down here, so I've now got four. Uh, now, these, these are a little bit further up the shaft than they were before, so that's probably better for balance anyway. But um, anyway, this uh, job done now, I just have to wait for a clear night whenever that might be. Okay, hopefully this records. I have to be talking quietly because it's after midnight, but I've polarized, polarized the mead, um, and now it's a matter of doing the adjustments on here to polarize the esprit so that it matches. Um, so I've got sharp cap set up here, and I'm now just going to make some adjustments to see if I can get it to be also polar line. I'm just going to rotate the telescope. Hopefully that's enough. And click next. Okay, so we need to make some adjustments using these knobs. Now I don't know which one does which, so we'll just have to experiment a bit. I think this one's moving it left. And this one is the, this one here I think is moving it up and down, I'm not sure. And we're about on excellent. Okay, so that's not bad, so now I've just got to lock these in place. So there was another thing I did discover um, as I was going through the process, and that's these. These are locking nuts, and so what you have to do is you have to unscrew those to loosen it, then make your adjustments with the main ones and once you've got adjustments correct then you just turn these and lock these back down into place that way it stops these from moving when you're slewing around so um, yeah you've got to keep these locked once they're once you've got everything in place however it turned out when i slew to a star like canopus just to check the um, or alignment. I noticed on the Skywatcher I could have it in the dead centre but when I checked it with the mead it was well out of the centre of the field of view and it was because I think I hadn't tightened those um, little nuts down after I'd made the adjustments to the um, old has knob so I then decided we're not going to go through the polar alignment thing again it's just easier just to align them with on a star I mean one of the telescopes is already polar aligned so that should be fine so I just manoeuvred the star back into the centre of the field of view on the mead 10 inch, just using the hand controller on the Ioptron mount. And then it was a matter of then flicking over to the sky watcher, uh, where I found obviously the star had moved away from the centre, and then just go back to those old has adjustments on the Optic Libra until that star was now central in the sky watcher's field of view. 
and that way I knew that both telescopes were aligned on the star. So look, I think that'll do for um, this part of the video. Um, and sort of break it up into smaller chunks so the videos don't go on too long. Um, I will talk about in part three how I've got the sequences set up in Nina for the two telescopes, how the synchronized dithering is working, and some of the other things you need to consider, particularly if you are guiding using uh, off-axis guiders and you know guiding through one telescope to, to look after two telescopes. What I did want to show you though was before the clouds rolled in, I did manage to capture a very small number of subs and I did five minute subs because I thought that wasn't a bad time to be capturing to check out how the guiding is going. And I was guiding through the 10 inch mead and this was what I got through the, the mead. And um, so you can see the central part of the um, rosette nebula. And if we zoom in, you can see that the stars are uh, nice and round. So I was pleased about that. Sort of not, not surprising given the fact that I was guiding through this particular telescope. What was more important was how did they look in the five minute sub that was taken at the same, at the same time with the Sky Watcher because before I aligned the two telescopes with this um, Optic Libra Altair's um, plate thing, uh, if I was guiding through one telescope, the other telescope uh, captured images ahead, elongated stars and vice versa. So I'll just pull up the sub that was being taken by the Skywatcher exactly the same time. Uh, wider field of view obviously because it's 840 millimeter focal length and you can see the stars are round. So I was pleased that that has actually worked um, getting those two aligned that way. So look as I said I'll try and get part three out as soon as um, the weather cooperates and um, if you found this video useful, um, consider giving it a thumbs up. Please check out uh, part one where I showed how I sort of set the hardware up up until the point where I got the Optech um, Libra plate um, with the two telescopes side by side. And um, look, if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel already, um, consider subscribing. That would be fantastic. And until next time, I hope you get plenty of clear skies.